Welcome to GreyPrimer.com. My name is Nick. I'm your host. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing our Warhammer special weekend with Kill Team. Kill Team? And more Kill Team! So much like part two of this series, um, celebrating all that is Warhammer Games Workshop and Citadel, uh, where we looked at Aeronautica Imperialis, a smaller scale sort of offshoot of the Warhammer 40k universe. This is, again, uh, you know, just like that smaller offshoot. This is a, but, but on the ground this time mostly, um, where we deal with sort of skirmish warfare in the 40k universe with these small kill teams of five, or I think it's normally five, isn't it? Certainly five figures in each of these. Yeah. You heard that right. This huge box. Five minis. There's more to it than that. But still. You know? Size of this thing. Two Frippers crew here with orcs. We got the Dolores. No. It's gonna haunt me. Dolores strain? Not the Dolores strain. Per Dolores. Whoever she is. Sorry. And finally the Sector Sanctoris kill zone. Kill zone Sector Sanctoris, so close. Environment expansion kit uh, with a huge and heavy box of scenery. Let's see what's in there as well. Uh, but back in a few moments, we'll see what's in there and see what's in all the others too. Uh, bear with me. Back in a sec. So here we go, our uh, kill team triple bill. We've got the Dolores strain, or like we said before, Dolores strain. We've got two Frippus crew, and then we have the Sector Centaurus uh, environment expansion. As you can see, the uh, design on the front here is very much what it could look like. Uh, you can see a few miniatures in there as well. This, this box does not contain any miniatures. This is scenery only. Uh, but it gives you an idea of, of scale there, certainly when you see them sort of standing beside this this huge statue. Uh, that is... If this dude is about, what, seven foot tall, that would make this about that tall. But uh, we can dig into it in a bit more detail uh, by showing you what's included here on the back. So you've got all these scenery pieces and then you've got game tiles as well uh, and then you've got another angle of, of what this looks like painted and out. Uh, but let's get in there. Uh, nice sleeve on that too. That's unusual. And a just a very plain box. Let's see what we got in here. That is a lot of plastic. This is actually a very heavy box. Must be the game tiles. I'm reckoning. I'll pop that out of the way as well. So here we have our statues um, in a few pieces. That's the, the back and then underneath is the front as well. So they're pretty impressive. I think I like the um, the skeleton one the most, but they're big. Um, that shield is amazing. Really great to have all of that sort of detail in the mold. Uh, really helps um, you to paint it and, you know, it can look spectacular with that. Uh, you could use a, a wash, I guess, to pick out that text and it could look absolutely fantastic. Lovely stuff. The detail on that face as well. That'd be a good practice, actually. I mean, you might want to do that in stone, but sometimes um, trying to do flesh tones on a miniature that, that is that size uh, is great practice for for doing that. You know, for doing flesh tones because often you, you when you're doing a miniature where the the size of the face is only a few millimeters. You know, look at the size of this thing. And then we're into their little feet. 
on the bottom of their plinths. That's kind of cool, like you're looking down the corridor between the two statues. I like that. Um, and then some more detail and stuff. I guess this is all the skull faces shield as well. The um, egg timer, I was going to say. <laughs> what do you call that? What's? It's not, he's not going to have an egg timer on his shield of death. It's a... <laughs> it's, what's it called? Like a s sand timer? I like that. This egg timer of doom. Uh, here we have... These, I guess, sit flat on the ground. Um, some of them. Yeah, okay, so th this must be sort of laid down flat. It's a, a crumbled and fallen over statue. And then you have various walls and bits here. Oh, great detail there as well. There's some lovely stuff in this. You know, that could really make your... Um, your campaigns just just feel up a bit more three dimensional, and rather than just sort of walking your beautifully painted miniatures across, like just a flat and featureless um, playing surface, you've got the, this amazing stuff to navigate. And I guess once painted up, it would really feel like you're in amongst the ruins of some some previously fantastic um, building or series of structures. So, oh, I just spotted something there. I really like that, actually. It's like almost like a sort of a shield feel to it, but very cool. It's just like laurel leaves around the skull, but I like it. Uh, we've got some more ruined walls and pillars. Uh, and all of this stuff really on sprues, it's it's going to be... not have the, anywhere near the same sort of impact as it'll have once it's on the battlefield. Um, but the thought of sort of moving your miniatures around these uh, will be very cool and the, the sort of going past these these ruined um, window frames you know and maybe they'll be I don't know how it works is it is it you know sort of line of sight would you have line of sight through there uh, would someone else be able to snipe you through the gaps um, full metal jacket style but um, very nice very nicely done uh, we have information pack here so let's just put that to one side for a second. And then we have the um, Sector Sanctoris a game board. Um, decent quality cardboard stock there. Um, feels nice and solid. And I'm just gonna open up this pack here. So we have our main booklet on the environment. Nice image there of it all sort of designed and out. That's very cool looking. Great opportunities, I suppose, as well for taking pictures. You know, the, the way they have it here, you've got the the sort of the main components there of the, um, the scenery kit here with the statues and stuff and the bits of wall. And then this background here, you could green screen that or you could... Um, have like you know do like a map painting or something which is actually you know it doesn't have to be anything spectacular you can have it at a distance throw it out of focus uh you know muted sort of colors to give a feeling of a blue sky it can just really make your your photograph sing having something like that in in the background of the shots beautifully painted minis there Looking at these images should give you some inspiration as to how to paint up some of this terrain. This image seems a lot less washed out than the ones on the box. I mean, it could be the, the same image or the, the same set of painted scenery, but uh, it looks a little bit more contrasty, which is nice. 
yeah, whoever painted this stuff in this book is uh, really capturing the essence of these characters. And just our final image here. And then we've got sort of a breakdown of what all the pieces are, what they relate to. You know, all these uh, gives them a little bit of a backstory as well as to what caused them to be destroyed, which is kind of a nice touch. And then um, just the back image as well with some beautifully painted minis. Really gorgeous. Good to see some arcs in there. What else we got in here? Oh, just a, a build manual for putting together the various walls and statues and things. Oh, so that thing I thought was a shield is actually part of this guy's shoulder um, detail, which is very nice. And then we have these last bits. Let's see what this is. Uh, these look like scenario cards. Yeah, so uh, what are they called? Narrative play missions, match play missions, and then a breakdown of what the environment represents. And then we have sort of what the, each of these missions um, sets up like, which is, that's a great idea. That's a great addition to have in there. And then the final piece of this is we have a small pack of cards. A decent stock, feel nicely laminated as well. Uh, some some great um, icons on there too. Look at that image. I just love that, love that logo. So now I'm just gonna go get these built up, see what they look like, get a feel for, you know, the scale like beside minis. We can see it in the pictures, but I wanna see what it looks like in the real world. Um, but I'll be back soon. So after an exhaustive build, here they are. The com I'm just kidding. It wasn't an exhaustive build. There is very little building in this. It's thankfully um, they've been smart enough to just make them huge components. You just there's there's not a huge amount of stuff to clip off sprues or anything or you know they come off pretty much just. I mean this is it. This is a single piece of plastic. All you really need to do is trim off all the little um, connectors to the sprue, uh, smooth those down. I did a little bit of, you know, um, work with a file or we sort of an emery board to, to smooth them off, but that was it. Um, but I mean, let's let's just appreciate the detail here. You know, let's it's, it's not overlook how how cool some of the, the, the details are on this. Um, bit of Venge Sevenfold in there? No. Um, <laughs> The components I'm showing you here are going to be repeated, unfortunately, in the orc kit, the death guard kit. We'll see those, whoops, we'll see those again and again. These are all the same components, I'll just take them out of the way. That's pretty cool though. Um, Nice. Nice design, I mean, but yeah, th those are all in the other two um, kill teams as well. And there's another one of those. I mean, they're well cast and everything. They're um, nothing particularly wrong with them, but just a bit disappointing to see the exact same. Uh, components in all three boxes. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think everything else is unique to Sector Sanctoris. So, what's very cool about this is that you have these ruined walls of what were clearly incredible buildings in the past. These uh, just are like two parts that just glue together very easily. Um, and then it's just a matter of shaving down a little bit the uh, connectors and stuff from the sprue just to tidy them up. I've left these again sort of um, unprimed 
to show you the, the areas that just needed a little bit of work on. Just this sort of bit of uh, sanding down to make them flat and smooth. Uh, but really very little work required. Another sort of larger section here of wall. And when you start to, you know, set these beside each other, they just, you know, you get the feel of the, the building that you're in. Uh, it, it just immediately adds that drama to the scenario, um, feeling of it being really in this terrible place, this terrible place that's seen centuries, millennia of battle. And you're never quite sure how old the building you're fighting through is. You know, you're, you're never how many battles have been fought there. It just gives it that kind of feeling of it adds that little bit of uh, realism to it and drama. And with these buildings, there's there's a lot of options here for how you can have a bit of fun with the painting schemes and things. You can do a lot of rot and corrosion and stuff. There's um, old components in here. You could rust this all up really nicely. Maybe have some oozing out of this pipe. Uh, busted up fan there. These could all be rusted as well. Uh, you can have a bit of fun there. Practice the techniques on something like this and then you can move over to your your big tank and and really just go to town on it knowing that you've perfected the technique on something that it doesn't really matter if you mess it up uh and then we've got uh, just just before going to the big dudes here uh i'm not really sure what these bits were for maybe they're like the base of a ruined pillar or something um one of them is gone forever maybe that's what it is just like a snapped off pillar just Seemed like a strange piece. And also, I don't know what these four things are for. Maybe they relate to the core set or something, which I don't have. I don't know. But they weren't in the manual. They weren't in the, the build building instructions. Uh, these are similar designs. Again, these are similar designs. But I couldn't find anything that this shape corresponded to. Um, I don't know. Not sure what these are. Um, but they were in there as well. And there were a bunch of these little guys. Try not to lose any of these. So I guess these are just little lights or something that would be alongside the, the, the footpaths or whatever. Because again, there was nothing sort of in the, in the manual for those. Uh, so let's look at our two tall and uglies here. Uh, these, they're so thick. I mean, they're like, I guess, nearly two inches thick at this point. Uh, and I don't know what it feels like. It, it kind of reminded me of like, you know, like an Easter bunny or something. Like one of those, um, like chocolate rabbits you would get at Easter. That's, but yeah, don't bite this. Uh, detail wise, it's okay. This one kind of looks like his face was pressed against glass. Some decent enough detail throughout. Uh, big wide seams as well. You can see it under under here. So that would take a bit of filler. Um, again, this hasn't been primed. So you can sort of see uh, where I've had to sort of, you know, shave it down and stuff with the connections to the sprues. So that would all be gone once I primed it. Uh, nice details on the um, shield. And then the other one representing death with the hourglass on the shield. Uh, very neat sword. Sensible shoes. They both wear sensible shoes. Um, and then kind of cool mechanical details on the back. Looks like a, a fan. So I'm not really sure what the vents and fans and stuff are doing on a statue, but perhaps the eyes lit up or something, or I don't know. Um, I don't see any any clock or anything. Maybe it, at, at noon the, this little arm swings out and, you know, the shield goes over and like a, a cuckoo comes at home. <laughs> um, yeah, because why else would there be all this mechanical stuff? I don't know. Uh, is, is this part of some huge um, huge Warhammer 40k clock? Is this the same? It is the same. So there's mechanical elements to these. Again, a vent. 
I don't know. Perhaps at noon they do a little dance, the pair of them, or have a little battle. You know, they, they both take out their swords and, you know, pfft, who knows? So that's them. Uh, like I say, a bit disappointing that it's the same few sprues over there. The ones we looked at first, that's in the other two kill teams and with the orcs and the death guard. But the, uh, the walls and everything here, the ruined walls are, are just incredible looking. The statues are neat, if a little confusing as to why they're mechanical. And then these other little components and stuff here, which, which I guess just, just add a little bit, bits and pieces of, of detail to your battlefield. I mean, Sector Sanctoris is not just the, the plastic you see here. There's the, the play mats as well. Sorry, the tiles that come into it too. Um, and those look pretty interesting. But I guess anything like this, if it adds uh, a bit of drama, a bit of sort of visual impact to your battles, then go for it. You know, it's it, it does look cool. And I think that it gives you a lot of opportunities for trying out different paint techniques for a world that's sort of winding down, going into, you know, just, just the last sort of vestiges of these incredible buildings before they just fall into just indistinguishable rubble. So let's go look at some orcs back in a sec. Okay, so this is the second part of our triple bill kill team unboxing. We've got two Frippus crew, the Orcs kill team. Uh, some dark but but great art on the front there. Uh, some lovely stuff. Why do Orcs like Checker? I don't know. Maybe there's a reason behind that. And then we've got the, the contents here as well. The biggest box in the world for five minis, but I'm being flippant there because you do get sort of scenery in there too, uh, and you get some uh, tokens and things. So there, there's more than meets the eye on this one. But let's get her unboxed. I like the Kill Team logo on the slide out bit here. Okay, we have here. So we've got the uh, instruction mag manual, no, not really, leaflet. Uh, and then we have our tactics cards. I think there's an exclusive tactics card in this as well. And we got the token sheet here too. Uh, let's pop and just a plain white piece of paper as our divider. Uh, would it be nice to have that um, lovely artwork? represented sort of on a dividing piece but uh as they do in a lot of their kits but hey white paper's fine we've got a some scenery here this looks like the same scenery from the sector hmm sector sanctoris so looks like the same stuff um, got large bases, and then we are into our orc models in lovely green plastic. Uh, lots of options on here for accessorizing. Oh wow, those skulls look brilliant. Oh, look at that one. I'm really looking forward to putting these together. Looks like, you know, from looking at this, looks like there are lots of variations, lots of different ways you can put these, um, that you can construct these. Uh, look at this huge skull. That's magic. Now we have the next sprue. For a second, I thought it was the same as the last one, but no, it is. Lots of differences there. Oh, great heads. Arcs are so pretty. And uh, armor pieces there as well. So uh, interesting. We'll see what that looks like put together. Looks like they're gonna be fun to build. I'm gonna have a look at the this pack now as well to see what's included in here. We've got all of the stats cards here for the different warriors. Our tactics cards. 
We got a couple of missions here as well. Trophy hunters and wrecking spree. Uh, layouts on the back. And then we have um, our token sheet there too as well. So here's the instruction manual. Um, to Fripper's crew. And then the Sector Imperialis Fallen statues. Got the flash git specs there at the back. And then a this sort of nice design they do now with the, their building guides with the different colors and stuff. And it looks like a huge number of um, optional pieces there for uh, designing these the way exact way that you want them to be. Um, anytime you see this symbol here, it just represents sort of multiple options for building. Um, I, I think that Games Workshop uh, manuals now are, are fantastic. Uh, very easy to follow, especially these ones that have the, the color representations in them. Um, just makes it so straightforward to track. And every time I find a, a box that I open with like black and white instructions, I'm always like, oh. <laughs> but uh, even with those, they're, they're, they're beautifully, uh, the images are so clear now. And the numbering systems. It's, there's there's been periods in the past where they weren't so straightforward to construct. Um, some lovely art or some photography in here, giving nice representations of what these can look like. Uh, some nice concept art there. Oh, isn't that brilliant? What a nice piece of art. Kind of feels like that should have been the cover. Even sparks at the bottom there, the way they've represented that. That's brill. Uh, some more examples of what it looks like um, with this crew sort of in battle. And then some beautifully painted orc miniatures at the bottom here. Great names. Dead Skull Drum. We've got Trag Rockfist. Got Grobber Drog. <laughs> Braga. Wow, Braca is bringing the DACA. Look at that. And we have got Captain Tufrippa himself. Or herself. That's brill. Oh, there's where the giant skull goes, goes puff. This one. <laughs> so much gun. Lot. Uh, Tales of Infamy, some lore at the back. And another lovely closing image. Um, that's lovely. Uh, I'm really excited now to get these built up uh, and sort of see what, what options there are as I'm going through, what they look like. You can sort of dry fit them before you make a choice. Uh, but I think it's going to be fun to put these guys together. Uh, I'm not going to put the scenery together because I think it is the same scenery from the other kit, the um, Sector Sanctoris kit, but I will double check that. And if it is different, I'll build it for sure. Okay, back soon. The Orc Kill Team was the weirdest sort of uh, up and down experience I've had yet in building miniatures. Uh, you can tell from, from here that they are huge, like really big. Uh, I don't know if I have any... Let me see. So these would be from Sigmar. Age of Sigmar. Uh, well, I guess they scale. Maybe they're they felt larger than they were. Yeah, they scale. I don't know. Maybe it's just the these the, the stuff up the back here. The sheer scale of the gun as well. So that's where I want to go back to these guns. The way you put these guns together when you're building these miniatures. It is one of the coolest experiences I've had in miniature building. All of, well, pretty much everything you see here are individual pieces uh, that you have multiple options for, you know, which panel goes here, which panel goes here, the bits underneath, the additional sort of additional weapon here, even the sight here, the connecting arm for some of them. Uh, and then you get up here, you've got this additional uh, weapon or optic on top of the armor. The, the sticks are the same, but the actual additions to them, so how you want to um, embellish them. Uh, 
Uh, this one in particular actually had a, a um, cybernetic leg, which is very cool. And yeah, it was, it was just so much fun. I was like putting these guns together, especially because you could actually, I mean, I think I spent the first couple of hours just putting the guns together, just trying to, um, trying to make them as, as cool and as individual and as, uh, you know, orc as possible. I'll, I'll just grab another one here as an example. So there's that first one I had. And here's the second one. And you can just see the, the difference, the variety. I mean, this one's got like a sort of a flame icon here. It's got an actual flamer underneath the little skull. I tried to correspond that to what was up in here with the skull and everything. Um, with this one, you actually have sort of the uh, spent, you know, cases coming out the the weapon, sort of this triple-barreled thing, and yeah. But here's the problem. Look at the pose. It's just it's identical. So they went to all of this effort getting these orcs to look so different when it came to the details and the components but the pose is identical and time and time across the miniatures exactly the same look at the detail in this gun you know the the casings coming out there the, and the orcs faces by all you know absolutely they, they are different the shoulder pads and everything are different. The embellishments and everything. There's, there's, there's just so many varieties, um, so many variations. Even the little equalizer on the, um, the barrel of this thing. But same pose. Bump, bump, bump. Actually, five times. It's the same pose. Um, does having the coolest guns I've ever put together make up for these five completely identical poses? I don't think it does. I think individually they are stunning. And if you take the, the captain figure, this one here, uh, you know, the, the, the special sort of backpack, the design there, this little creature hanging off him. Uh, the gun itself, again, got a little chainsaw here, the exhaust out the back, huge barrel, <sighs> pirate hat or whatever, um, the cigar up here, I just, and there, there were there were options for this arm as well, so you could have um, him holding like a smaller weapon or whatever there too. But again, the same pose. So, best gun ever, but most boring pose, uni pose, and completely just the best and the worst, unfortunately. And <laughs> so close to being a legendary kit. But listen, I'm going to go on to Death Guard, and let's see if there's a bit more variety in the poses there. Okay, so here we have the final part of our kill team triple bill. And uh, we're down to the Death Guard kill team now, the Dolores Strain. <laughs> the Dolores Strain. Oh my god, that's going to be stuck in my head the whole time now. Uh, great cover art here. Pretty dark and creepy and sinister. Um, less tentacles and rot than we've come to expect from Death Guard, but uh, impressive nonetheless. We've got the same terrain pack that comes with uh, Tufripa's crew, and then we have these five separate minis, uh, some tactics cards, a token sheet here, and then instructions and a little bit of lore. But let's get in there. I love these little trays that inc are included with the Kill Team um, Warbands. They are actually fantastic for building the miniatures in because it keeps all the pieces um, safe and inside. Um, just as, a, you know, it's great to have it. Uh, here we have the, the instructions, the lore, 
token sheet, um, tactics, tactics cards, maybe mission cards there as well, or normal plain paper insert uh, to protect the, just basically protects this from this, because these can be pointy. Um, now we have the terrain. Nice large bases. And then we're into the sprues themselves. So two different sprues here, I would imagine. Yep, they are. And in that sort of lovely, grotesque Nurgle green. So let's see what kind of detail we've got here. Oh, look at the leather strapping on this staff, this two-handed weapon. That's kind of, kind of interesting. Um, very well done. Oh, some lovely detail here. Oh, let's, I think we're going to get more on this other side. Oh, wow. Look at the spikes above the shoulder. Um, the shoulder armor. Nice detail in the sword, too. But those spikes are just so cool. Just when you think Games Workshop has got nothing more up its sleeve, it goes and does something like that, which is remarkable to look at. These are great. Really looking forward to getting these built now. And then this nice uh, decay on the, the, the big axe as well. Skulls everywhere, of course. And let's have a look at the other sprue. Whoa, look at that shoulder armor. Beautiful. Nice load of chainmail there. Uh, that's looking pretty gross there, whatever's happening to this guy. A symbol of Nurgle. Oh, cool. Cool weapon. I imagine there'll be much more detail within the the book there as to which what these weapons are capable of, uh, and what each of them is called to. So, gorgeous detail here, throughout. Really is, and yeah, absolutely looking forward to putting that together. Uh, I'll not build the. Um, terrain obviously uh, because we've seen it before uh, so yeah we've got our death guard tactics cards here we've got um, stats specs nice art there actually too I guess that's the guy from the front cover mission cards we've got experimental weapons and violent vectors and then set up tokens here and then instruction manual so again full color designs to show you uh, exactly how to put these together in a very very straightforward way with some variations but nowhere near as many as the the orcs had and then we're into the lore book. So, introduction. Again, that nice piece of art from the front cover. Uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, you can see the blight flies and everything there in the background. Loving the, the glue on that eye. And then, seeing them all individually here. There's just no way I'm going to pronounce these names. Just not going to happen. No. Uh, no. Mulg the Curdled? Oh, what an amazing name. That one was worth me trying to pronounce. Mulg the Curdled. Genius. And am I going to pronounce that? Boo box glouch. 
beautifully done uh, beautifully painted actually and then some nice scenes with them sort of featured in it going up against marines and the like and then a bit of lore at the back and the legacy of decay uh, and again some some lovely art so i'm gonna go and get these built and be back to you in just a few moments see you soon take care and here it is here's the uh final box from our kill team unboxing here this is the um, dollar strain now as i said when i was looking at the orc kill team the scenery is exactly the same it's exactly the same in this box as it is with the orcs and it's also scenery that's found in the uh, sector sanctorum so we don't really need to dig into that at all the death guard kill team was not the one that i was most excited about in my head i wanted just to once i started to build out those orc guns i was like these are going to be the best ever and then they turned out to be just like individually they are <laughs> but as a kill team they're boring looking the same thing can most definitely not be said about the death guard kill team these are amazing miniatures they're big again got these nice big bases Lots of variety when I was putting them together. Beautiful, sort of corrupted details on them. Um, I think most of them have two options for the head that goes inside there. Not that you see a huge amount of it through this Terminator armor. Uh, look at that beautiful weapon. Great sort of uh, wooden handle too. You get a lovely effect in that. I have a feeling that wooden handle couldn't support that blade, but you know, maybe a grandfather Nurgle has a special type of wood he puts into those axes. Great detail on the shoulder armor as well. Uh, these weapons actually, the, the sort of twin barreled ones, uh, split right down the middle there and give you an option on either side. Some look better than others. I kind of like this one because it, it kind of felt like they were the same caliber. Um, one didn't stick out too much further than the other. There's a little bit of a tentacle or something sticking out of this one, which is neat. Uh, and I thought that these drum barrel, uh, the drum mags uh, worked well beside each other. This one's got a little bit of a chain on it too. Um, I really enjoyed that one. So let me just look up this weapon. So I think they're both bolters. Yep, yeah, so those are both bolters. So it's a twin bolter there or dual bolter. And then the axe is a bubotic axe, just in case you're interested. That's what that's called. So let's hop on to the next one. Look at the size of this gun. That is just cracker. And you can see where it's strapped to his arm there as well. Just this, so he can, he can hold on to it. Another bubotic axe. Beautiful detail there. You even see where the armor is starting to split because of the um, Papa Nurgle's gifts. And I love the, see the smile? Sort of coming just from underneath that cracked helmet. It's just teeth all the way around. Lots of um, Nurgle iconography as well. Lots of flies and the three sort of circles. You know, great fly emblem there on the shoulder armor. Let me just check what this weapon is. This is the Plague Spewer. So that's what that's called. Oops. So I guess whatever plague lives in this big bottle at the back and then just feeds through yeah you probably don't want to be in front of that let's go on to our next one sorry for the delay in focus there i thought this was going to be fragile actually to put together so this is a blight lord terminator with the flail of corruption could have guessed that name. Yeah, that's just cracker. So that did come go together as like separate pieces and I was worried because you can see I just kind of left this unprimed to show you where the glue points were. So it's just in here, uh, but it was 
it's actually really sturdy once it's together. Um, nothing flimsy about it at all. These are solidly uh, made, built really easy, and I think they look glorious throughout. Again, Nurgle iconography there. Uh, really uh, interesting to build and lots of you know I mean they're all sort of standing you know but they're they're there's different their their legs are all sort of splayed in different ways they're in different sort of there is different posture I mean this guy's sort of stepping forward with his left leg so it's not like the orcs there is variety here uh, so this is I think the auto cannon let me check so this is a blight lord terminator with a reaper auto cannon Another weapon you probably do not want to be downwind of. Yeah. That is cool. And look at the creepy little arms sticking out from underneath this bug-like armor. This guy is far down the road. And all the spikes as well coming out. Great sword too. A sort of tattered cape. I mean, there's just a, so much detail in here. It could just be having so much fun painting that. And then we're going to get on to our final one here, who is carrying the... Bup, 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 bup. This is the Blight Lord Terminator with Blight Launcher. So this is the Blight Launcher. Uh, so the, the Blight Launcher, the Reaper Auto Cannon, and the Plague Spear are all classed as heavy weapons. And you can kind of see why. That's beautiful. I like that it's not a round barrel as well. It's just kind of twisted up. Um, another variant on the, the, the face there, the armor. So you could probably get a nice glow effect coming from inside there. Uh, stumpy sword again, but um, pretty cool. Nice spikes on the the knee there too. That sort of creepy, spindly, um, almost like thorns coming out of there. Cross between a claw and a thorn. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I even noticed that coming out of the back. Is that a living thing, or is it just like three skulls to represent Nurgle? You ask him, I'm not going to ask him. Beautiful. You know, hideous, grotesque, but beautiful. So for me, the Death Guard kill team is the hands-down victor between these three kill team box sets. Uh, not really all that fair putting the Sector Sanctoris into that mix. Uh, perhaps in the future we'll look at an, another couple of kill teams and, and sort of rate those as well. But the Death Guard, yep, absolutely number one, head of the orcs. If they'd been able to continue what they started with those incredible guns in the orc kill team, they could have had one of the best miniatures of the last few years. Uh, as standalones, perhaps an individual one of those is up in there. You know, it, maybe it is, but... It, certainly the... I mean, that experience with the gun is unlike any I've had before. So much fun putting those together. And then it just kind of ran aground because they were all the same. All five um, of the, the miniatures were the same. But that's it for day three of our Warhammer Citadel Games Workshop unboxing and review special. We have gone through Blood Bowl, Aeronautic Imperialis, Kill Team. And next up for our final day is going to be Warcry. We are going to unbox and review four war bands we've got the oh as i try to remember the unmade iron golem cypher lord splintered fang so yes i completely read those off the sides of the boxes but that's all coming up tomorrow on day four of our four day warhammer special for now please like and share and subscribe and comment and do all the lovely things that keep the channel going and i will be back with you really soon Thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye now.